this tutorial is about using the qualities of the V-fold to create extra tall structures. As the V-fold closes, it folds down forward. When you have a floating plane built onto it, that comes down nearer to the page. And so then you can build another V-fold on it, pointing in the other direction, and that comes down taking another floating plane, again lower to the page, and then you can build onto that. And so you can build a sort of zigzag effect by building these reverse pointing V-folds. So this is a pretty crude version I made. And I'll show you how I made this in a minute, but before that I'd just like to run through some books that have really amazingly tall uh, V-fold structures in them. The first book I'd like to show you is David Pelham's Le Colis Surprise, and it's got a really amazing structure at the very end. This is one of these tower structures if you look at it from behind, you can see in here there is a V-fold, goes down, stands up, that is raising a floating plane here, which has got other V-folds built on it. It's hard to actually see into it, but here you can see this is another V-fold, and the arms are attached to those planes jutting out. And this at the very top, well, you can see this is a V-fold with another V-fold on top of it. And then this, the face is a parallel fold. So yeah, nice design there. The next one I'd like to show you is, this is a really extraordinary tall structure, but there's no way we could explain it in this tutorial, but I just thought you might really like to see this one, the way it, it rises up so high above the, above the page. If we look at the structure behind that, you can see it is a V-fold here, raising a floating plane here. But the, the actual measurements, the measurements up this side and this side and on these two, it's, it's quite complicated. So just uh, enjoy the height and yeah, in future, future works I will explain it. And then we've got this one. This is uh, another book by Matthew Reinhardt, Jungle Book. Another extraordinary spread, here it is, again it comes up really high above the page. This is a V-fold, these are parallelograms being raised by it. You look behind and you can see it's an array of parallelograms and V-folds raising this floating plane which has got another V-fold and another. So that's how you get this sort of concertina action that's all based on the fact that the V-fold folds down forwards which gives you a plane that you can then build on and go higher and higher. So you end up with a structure which is higher than the total height of the page of the book. So the next one, this is a very pretty little book, Big Bang Pop by Philip Wu, French book. It's really amazing colours, but the only thing I wanted to show you in this one is, is this little pop-up that, that comes up amazingly high for the, considering the size of the page. This is a V-fold that's coming forward. And in effect, this is a floating plane, but the dimensions on the base, on the two uprights and on this, that's what gives you that amazing height. And then the last one I wanted to show you is uh, Pop-Up Frankenstein and the Paper Engineering, and this is by David Hawcock. And this is similar to the last one I showed you, but it's even more extraordinary height that you get with this pop-up. Again, it's based on V-folds, V-folds folding forward, giving you this equivalent of a floating plane with another V-fold built onto it. But it's a bit more complicated and sophisticated than that. So that's that one. This is all I wanted to show you in books, and then I'll just show you how to make a sort of simplified version of one of these. So we'll start with a base sheet, very thoroughly creased. And then I've got these pre-cut V-folds. These are I think it was tutorial two. It's the right angle V-fold, so they're just creased down the middle. They're both 90 degrees at the bottom, tabs on the top and bottom. We're gonna stick it on here, and the whole thing is gonna fold forward. And there's gonna be another one in front of it, so the whole thing can fold forward and hold a floating plane on top of it. And you can get the maximum movement is the closer you go to 90 degrees to the spine, the more movement you'll get, and the flatter it'll go. But if you go at 90 degrees to the spine, the whole thing just falls flat. So you can't go at 90 degrees, you have to go at 
something like 85, something like that. With all these, you start by sticking down one side. So I'm going as close to 90 degrees as I can, 90 degrees to the spine. Stick it down, fold it shut, fold the base shut, and it finds its natural sticking position. So that's the first V-fold. And we want the next one. It needs to be stuck down parallel to it. And so I'll just use this little piece of card to give me a guaranteed parallel line to stick it to. There's the line. You just stick down one side. I'll keep that for future reference. So we stick that to the spine again, to the line with the central crease aligned with the spine. Fold it closed. We have to be quite careful here because we've got the other one already in place. So there's two identical V-folds. Now we can put a floating plane in above those. So I'll just take one of these pieces. Should be about right. You can always trim these down after you stuck them on. So you just cut a piece about the right size, put a crease down the middle, crease it really well. Make sure that it's going to fit onto all those four tabs, and you can put glue on them all at the same time. So put this into place. Fold it shut to make sure that it's all working nicely. There we go. So that's the first floating plane. As it closes, you see that it goes down and it's given us between that crease and the outer edge we've got that much space to play with so now we can build another layer onto that one so this time we'll make the v-folds face the opposite way so they're going to be facing this way these previous tabs i've had them facing back towards me so that means the best way to be looking at this structure is from that so this time i'm going to make the tabs again although the v is pointing this way I'm going to make the tabs point towards me as well so that you get a better visual when you look at it. So I'll stick this one on. Stick down one side, close it. That's the beginning of the second layer. Uh, this one needs to be, again, stuck down parallel to that. So I'll use this template again, mark the lines on the floating plane. Again, only need to do one side because the other side is going to find its natural position. That's it, and close it down carefully. more or less right so we just keep going stick another layer on top of that let's see if that one's going to fit i think so so we put a, a crease in that so put glue on all these start with the back on that corner, put it into that. Close it down. There we are, we've gone two layers up. And so we've still got between that gully and the outer edge, there should be 
room for yet a third layer. So let's just try it. This card is a little bit light. Ideally, it would be, would be a bit heavier and a bit more solid. But we'll put another one. And this one, again, it faces points that way. Yeah, still working. It's still staying within the outer page. So we'll just get the, the next layer parallel with that as well. Still working more or less. Bit rickety. We'll put one more layer on top of that. Put glue on all these four tabs and just fit this in there. Close it down. That is going up three levels. It's getting rickettier and rickettier as we go, but you get the idea anyway. Um, it's still quite a lot bigger than the actual size of the page that it's rising from. And you've still got clearance between here and the outer page. So you can still put a V-fold of some sort on top of that. Let's just try one like this. I'll make this into an acute V-fold. This time the angle in the middle is less than 90. Make a couple of tabs there. Just a little one to, to finish it all off and make the most of the height we've managed to generate. So this again will be pointing, be pointing back towards me. This will go in like this. Maybe I'll put a counterfold in it just for a bit of extra pizzazz. Just fold it like that. So here it is. You've got a four level pop-up structure. You can see the idea of what we're aiming at. More rigid card would have helped. More precise measuring would have helped. But overall, you get the idea of what we're trying to do. And we've got a structure much bigger than the original page that it was built into. At the moment, I am working on a book on highly complex pop-up design, and that's due to be published sometime in 2018.